Hey Keepers, it's me, Willa, for my return to Children of Light. I thought I'd kick things off with a super outdated YouTube trend and do a little draw my life. So, let's get started. So I was born on April 18th, 1996, in the middle of Central Florida, home of Mickey Mouse. See? That's me. I was born to Regina and Robert Angelo, but of course, I know them better as mom and dad. They were high school sweethearts, and I was their third baby. They named me Isabella Angelo after my great-grandmother Isabella, which is a name that basically means devoted to God. And for reasons I don't know, that name didn't stick, and I've been going by Willa for as long as I can remember. So I was forever relegated to a life of having my name spelt incorrectly on Starbucks cups. Such a struggle. And yes, that last one did happen. Do not ask me how or why. So I grew up with two older brothers, Gabriel, who was seven years older than me, and Thomas, who was five years older than me. They did not like me very much because they had been living as kings in an almost all-boy household. Of course, they still had the majority, a fact which they liked to remind me of as often as they could. My mom is Puerto Rican and my dad is Italian, so I grew up with two cultures where I was surrounded by family and big parties all of the time. We were always having big get-togethers and I had lots of family and lots of love. My parents tell me that when I was little, I was always running around in the yard and trying to make friends with whatever animal I saw. And this included everything. Stray cats, squirrels, beetles that I found in the garden. And it was basically my parents and my brothers often having to getting me out of situations where I could get hurt because I just wanted to talk to all the animals. And they were probably not as friendly as I imagined. Once I started school, I changed a bit because I would spend more time reading. I had learned to love um, reading. But I still loved being outside as often as I possibly could. So I would read outside, run around the backyard a little bit still. Um, so I was still outside. And I would play football with my brothers all the time. And I even joined the community swimming team and started taking some archery classes at the rec center. So I was an active kid and involved in a lot of stuff. And like I said before, I loved school, but school did not necessarily love me. Um, I was a little bit of a teacher's pet, and I had a big frizzy hair and glasses, and I liked to read, and I didn't like what all the other kids liked, and as kids will do, they were not kind about this. So I got made fun of a lot in school, and this resulted in me feeling super shy and super insecure, and those feelings kind of lasted. And then when I was 10, I faced the first really scary event in my life. Um, I was in class one day and the guidance counselor from my school came to get me. And she sat me down in the office and told me that my dad had been in a really bad car accident and that he was in the hospital. And that my aunt was coming to get me and take me home because my mom was with him. And after hours and hours of waiting with my brothers at home almost in like silence, my mom came home and told us that my dad was in a coma and that he was hurt really badly. He ended up being in the hospital for months, and we really didn't know if he was ever going to recover. My mom was usually with him, so I was living at my aunt's house for the whole time. And I was so scared and upset and homesick all the time, and I really thought I was going to lose my dad. And I would ride my bike to church every single day and just pray and pray and pray that he would get better. Because I was so scared that he was going to die. Luckily, my dad was okay, and even though it took him a couple of years and a lot of therapy, he pretty much went back to being his old self. Um, he has a permanent limp and he walks with a cane now, and his health has to be monitored really closely because of a brain injury from the accident, but he's here, and he's healthy, and I just love him so much. So after the accident, my mom became pretty closed off and we started fighting a lot more often than we used to. And as a family in general, we became more isolated. 
the big family get-togethers that I used to have when I was a kid didn't happen as often as they used to and if ever and both my brothers were off in college eventually and I was just lonely but despite this loneliness I was still a, a big dreamer I dreamed of going to college and getting away from home to start my own life and having the adventures that I always used to pretend I was having when I was running around as a kid but it was really hard to believe that any of it was possible. All of that changed, of course, when I was 13, and I saw that Disney was hosting auditions for incoming 8th graders to serve as holographic tour guide hosts in the Magic Kingdom. It sounded like the coolest idea ever to me. I loved Disney, and I had done some plays and musicals in middle school, and it sounded so amazing to be involved with new cutting-edge technology. I really didn't think I was going to get it, but my dad encouraged me to just try out and see what happened and that I could do it. And then beyond all of my wildest expectations, I got the job. I was so excited and scared too. I had to go to Hollywood Studios to film all these different audio and video sequences and then the Imagineers put everything together to create real working holograms. They called them DHIs, which stands for Disney Host Interactive. Or if you're talking to Dell, it also can mean daylight hologram imaging. So after the initial filming, I thought my job was done, but I couldn't have been more wrong. One night, not long after the DHIs had debuted, I went to sleep and woke up in Magic Kingdom, and I met this old Imagineer named Wayne, who told me that me and the other four kids that were the holograms were destined for a greater purpose. I thought I was dreaming until I got contacted by one of the other DHIs, Charlene, who told me that she had been contacted by another DHI, Finn, and that we all had to meet up and talk about something, and that we were all having these dreams in the Magic Kingdom. So eventually we all got together and we found out that Disney was being threatened by a group of its villains who called themselves the Overtakers. They wanted to take control of the magic in the Disney theme parks for themselves and then use that magic to take over the world. There were five of us and we knew we had no other choice. We had to stop the Overtakers. After that, my life totally changed. Fighting the Overtakers turned into an epic battle that lasted almost five years. I basically became a superhero fighting for my life every day and I had to force myself to break out of my comfort zone and do things like sneak out of the house and lie to my parents. I was not expecting any of it. And I was basically living like a superhero. Um, so after that, stories of us fighting the Overtakers became legend among big, big Disney fans. They called us the Kingdom Keepers. And there were books, TV shows, conspiracy theories on the internet. I became a celebrity overnight. And as scary as life as a Kingdom Keeper was, it brought me so much good. Uh, me and the other keepers became so close. We were almost like a family, and I met my best friends, Finn, Del, Terry, Charlene, Amanda, and Jess. And we are still like a family all these years later. And at the end of ninth grade, we went on a Disney cruise together as part of the marketing for the Kingdom Keepers. And a lot of scary things happened on that cruise, but at the end of it, when I was 15, I ended up having my first boyfriend, Del, and we're still together to this day, and I love him so much. I finally got to see myself achieving all the dreams I had when I was lonely in my room in elementary and middle school. Um, I graduated high school and made all these plans for my life. I even started to get over all the shyness and insecurities that I had developed from bullying. So with the keepers in my life, things took a turn for the better. And I really have no idea what's coming next. Me and the keepers have been through some pretty crazy stuff since I graduated high school, and that kind of made me put any plans on hold for the future. But even though I don't know what's coming next, I'm so excited for whatever it is, especially to do it with my best friends. So that's it for me today, guys. Please remember that if you want to keep up with our adventures here, you can like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to keep up with our in adventures on Instagram, you can follow us at children.of.light. Or if you want to keep up with me personally, you can follow me at willow underscore tree underscore angelo. 
I'm so excited to be back with Children of Light, you guys. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.